This video will look at binary numbers, in particular converting between denary and binary and back again. Also looking at adding binary numbers and looking at binary shifts. So first of all, um, let's have a look at how we can go from a binary number into denary. In other words, to be able to work out what the denary value of a binary number is. And the nice thing is that it is fairly straightforward. So if we were given this binary number here, all we would need to do if we wanted to convert it into denary is we would need to put the value of the bit um, in each column at the top. So you can see that from the right hand side going to the left, the first column, that one represents how many ones it is. The next column is how many twos. The next column along is how many fours, how many eights, how many sixteens, all the way to how many 128s. And then all we need to do is just add the values where there's a one underneath together. So here we've got a one under the one, so that's one lot of one, one lot of four as well, because there's a one under the four, and one lot of 128. In other words, this binary number, what it represents is the value of one lot of 128, one lot of four, and one lot of one added together. So if you add 128, a four and a one together, you get 133. So that binary number you can see there, if you were to um, work out its value in denary, uh, it would be 133. Now, converting from denary into binary, also fairly straightforward, uh, and we will do the following. So um, if you were given the number 202, the denary number 202, and you're asked to work out what that binary um, equivalent would be, all you would do is you would look at the values of each of the columns in your binary number system, and you would ask yourself, does the number in that column, does it fit into the number that we're actually trying to convert? So to begin with, can you make 202 by having um, 128 along with some other numbers? Does 128 fit into 202? Now, the answer obviously is yes. So what we do is we put a one into that column, we subtract 128 from 202, leaving 74. We know that one of the building blocks of 202 is 128, and we move on. So now we ask ourselves, does 64 fit into 74? Now 64 does fit into 74, so we put a one in the column, because we know that 202 is gonna be made up of one lot of 128, and one lot of 64, and something else, and we'll work that out in a minute. So we add a one into that column, and we subtract 64 from 74, leaving 10. We move on. Does 32 fit into 10? No, it doesn't. So we put a zero in there. We know that we cannot make 202 from 128, 64, and 32. So we put a zero, and we move on. Does 16 fit into 10? No, so we put a zero there. Does eight fit into 10? Yes, it does. So we put a one in that column, and we subtract eight from 10, leaving two. Does four fit into two? No, it doesn't. So we move on. Does two fit into two? Yes, it does. So we put a one in that column. And then finally, does one fit into zero? No, it doesn't. So we put a zero in that column. So in other words, 202 in binary is 11001010. One, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And to put it another way, the number 202 is made up of the following building blocks. It's made up of 128 and a 64 and an 8 and a 2. If you were to add those values together, you'll get back to 202. And that's a nice little check that you can do as well. So 202 is that number. Let's check that it works. Let's go from binary back to deanery. And we add uh, the values where there is a 1 underneath. So 128 plus 64 plus 8 plus 2 is 202. And that's how you can convert from deanery uh, into binary. Now adding binary numbers is also very straightforward, providing that you do the following things. You keep your numbers in the correct columns. You remember that 1 plus 1 is 1, 0 in binary and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, 1 in binary. And then we do pretty much the same that we would do if we were adding together denary numbers. We just work our way from right to left, we add up the values in those columns, and if there are two digit numbers that result from our addition, then we carry the left-hand digit 
over to the next column. So let's have a look at this. So starting on the right hand side, one plus one is two. Two in binary is one zero. That's a two digit number. We can't put two digits in that one column. So we put the right hand digit underneath and we carry the left hand digit over. Now, the next column is one plus one plus one. Now that is three and three in binary is one one. Again, it's a two digit number um, that's resulting from this addition. So we can, can't put two digits in that, in that one column. So we put the right hand digit underneath and we carry the left hand digit over. So one plus one plus one is one one, which results in that. Next we have zero plus one plus one, which is two. Now two in binary is one zero. So we put the zero underneath and carry the one over because it's a two digit answer. Then we've got zero plus one plus one, which again is two. So we put a zero underneath and carry the one. One plus zero plus one is two. So we do the same again. One plus zero plus one is two. So we do the same again. Here we've got zero plus zero plus one. Now that results in one, which is a single digit answer. So we just put the one down and nothing to carry over. And then zero plus one is one. And that is the result of the addition. That's how we add binary numbers together. So we could do a quick check. We could actually convert each of those binary numbers and what we would end up with, the first number is 51, the second number is 143, and if we added those together in deanery, we would get 194. And what we could do is we could do a quick conversion of our answer, and again, that is 194. So we know that we've done that addition correctly. So what would happen in the following situation? Well, I've already completed most of the addition. If we look at that final column, one plus one is two, and that's a two digit answer. So what would we do there with the carry? Well, what we would end up doing is we would carry the one over, and that would be uh, the most significant bit in that answer. It would represent 256. Now, the problem is that most of the time when we are adding uh, bytes together, we uh, would expect to, well, we'd hope to get a byte as our answer. Computer systems traditionally, remember, have regist had registers which were eight bits in size. So whenever we had a nine bit answer resulting from an addition, that wouldn't be able to be dealt with correctly by the CPU. And what you would end up with is you would end up with an overflow error. So because the largest number we can hold in a byte is 255, if we add two bytes together, there's a chance that the answer will be greater than 255. This answer will not be able to be held in a byte, and so this causes an overflow error. Modern computers, CPUs can hold much larger numbers, so um, this is dealt with. You might well have heard of a 32 or a 64-bit processor. They can hold much longer binary numbers. But for your exam, you have to be aware that if you were to get a, an answer of an addition which doesn't fit in a byte, uh, we would know, we would call that an overflow error. So watch out for that whenever you have a GCSE exam question where you're adding two numbers and the resulting answer is a nine bit answer. So let's have a little look at binary shifts. So binary shifts is where you literally just shift the binary digits to the left or to the right by a certain number of um, spaces. And the result of it is, well, if you look at this, we go from 27 to 54. Now, 54 is twice 27. So a left bit shift doubles the number. So notice how here all of the binary digits have just been shifted over to the left hand side and where there's been a space that's been created we've just put a zero in as a placeholder so that's an example of a left bit shift of one place it doubles the number so it's very good at multiplying or dividing so binary shifts is a great way of multiplying numbers very quickly or dividing numbers very quickly so each time a left binary shift occurs, the number will double in size, and each time a right binary shift occurs, the number will half in size. So let's have a look at multiplying in powers of two. Here you can see that every time we've shifted that number over, it's doubled. So if you were to do a, th uh, a left bit shift of three places, that would double the number, double it again, and double it again. So notice how each of the bits shift to the left, any gaps created from the right, like I said before, is filled with a zero. You must remember to do that. 
So right binary shifts is the opposite way, and this results in dividing, or halving I should say, dividing by powers of 2. So if you start off with a number 216 and you were to do a right bit shift of one place, it would half the number. If you were to do a two um, placed right bit shift, it would halve and then halve again, and so on and so forth. And notice here that as each of the bits to, um, shift to the right, any gaps from the, uh, from the left are filled with a zero, and anything that's moved off the right hand side just gets lost and forgotten.